Hey everybody, uh, welcome to today, uh, Midday Motivations here on Wednesday afternoon. I hope your week is going well and I hope that whatever you've been doing, it's going to be turning out to be great and wonderful. But before we start, let's just open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. We just honor and adore you. We come before you. We lay down our stuff while we are here to be able to hear what you have to say to us through your word. And Lord, as we continue with the series of I Am, which is you, we just ask that you soften our hearts and give us the, 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 the greatness to be able to understand your love. And we just ask in the name of Jesus that uh, those that are not near you come closer to you through this message for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so we're looking at um, the continuation of the I Am statements. And today we're going to be looking at the door, where on Monday we looked at the way, the truth and the life. And yesterday was the light of uh, the world. But let's have a look at what it says in John chapter 10. Uh, and we're going to take it from verse 1. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters the door is the she uh, shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by his name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will not, yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know his voice of, a, of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he had spoken to them. And uh, then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep, all who, all who ever came before me, are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come to except to steal, to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So let's carry on. Let's look at the word, word wealth, abundant. You know, Strong's Accordance says it's four, the Strong's Accordance 4053 says it's a super abundant, overflowing, surplus, over and above, more than enough, extraordinary, above the ordinary, and more than sufficient. So, beautiful that, eh? A little bit of abundance there. And uh, what does it say about abundant life? God's covenant to us is a covenant for abundant life. From the very beginning of time, scriptures showed us that God wanted us to be happy and prosperous. In generations, we are told that God made everything and declared it to be good. And then he gave us a beautiful, plentiful earth to Adam. Adam was given dominion over it all. And God's plan from the beginning was for man to be enriched and to have a prosperous, abundant life. Here, Jesus declares his intention to recover and restore to man what the Father's intent and to break and block the devil's intent to hinder our receiving it. So that's a great passage. That's a great, great passage. And if we continue just a little, a little bit further, I am the good shepherd, from verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep. And I'm known by my sheep, by my own apologies, as the Father knows me. Even so, I know the Father, and I lay my life down for the sheep. The other sheep which I have not of this fold, them I will must bring in, and they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore my Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down myself. I have power to lay it down. And I have power to take it up again. This commandment I have received from my Father. It's a beautiful illustration of the compassion, the love, the willingness to lay his life down for you and me and for everyone else that's come before us and anyone else that's going to come after us and everything in between. So it's a beautiful passage about the door and about him being the door, which I'll read again. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And we'll go in and out and find pastures. 
you know, this was the third I am that he mentioned. And uh, we'll get to the rest as we progress through the week. And to go in and out does not mean that one can uh, have him one moment and outside him, out of him the next. He, he's always within us and always abiding in us. And it's a security and safety for us to abide in his love. So while I leave that with you, I've just got it on my heart that to um, share this word with you so that you may be able to be motivated, not by my word, but by the word of the truth. And that's why I'm reading it straight from the Bible. You know, he's the true shepherd and he's the good shepherd. And his love is always there. His arms are always there. It's up to us to turn to him and receive the love that he has for us. But let's have faith. Let's have hope and let's have trust that he will do the miraculous work through his spirit, the Holy Spirit. So, Heavenly Father, as we come and close before you today, we ask that you touch those people that are going to listen to this message. Allow them to go into your word and find out who you really are and allow the Holy Spirit to come and dwell within them on a permanent basis so that they can have the revelation of the true love that you have for them. We pray this and abundance and for your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Okay guys, I hope that's been encouraging for you. I hope that's equipped you. I hope that's nourished you. But don't take my word for it. Get into the word yourself so that you can understand and get the revelation for yourself. So I just want to bless you. I just want to thank you for your time this afternoon. And I look forward to uh, spending time with you again during our radical relationships this afternoon. Take care, sending you love. Ciao, ciao.